It's time to begin tonight. Our first song, we're number 347. 347. Let's sing one, two, and four. One, two, and four. Three forty seven. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I cannot fail. When the howl of storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God. I'll be reading from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. I'll be reading from the ESV. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister, Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Next song be number 335. That's just where I have open prayer. 335. Let's see. One, two, and three, please. One, two, and three. <clears throat> if the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem gray all the whole day through, there's a silver light that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and see my friend, trust his promises grand. Sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you, he will keep your soul. Let all be faithful, look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Off we are all troubled and tired, sick with sorrow and pain. There are others living in sin, blessed with earthly gain. Take new courage, we cannot tell what tomorrow may bring. When the dark clouds vanish away, when the truly can see, sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you, he will keep your soul. Let all be faithful, look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Off we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's first sky. 
when it seems a fortune on earth crown and pass us by. There are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust in me stay, we shall pleasures untold. See and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you, he will keep your soul. Let on be faithful, look to hear me and pray. Lift your voice and praise him his song. Sing and be happy today. Let's pray together. Loving Father, we approach you this evening with hearts full of joy and peace and happiness. We're so thankful to come together as brothers and sisters in Christ, as joint heirs of your rich legacy, your rich gift freely given to us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, we cannot express in words the gratitude we have for you and for Jesus. But Father, we also seek to be pleasing to you and seek to do good to everyone. And we ask, Father, that you help us in that effort. Especially, Father, make us mindful daily of the lost souls around us and to reach out to them earnestly with concern that they have not been added to your Lamb's Book of Life. Father, in a world swimming in sin, and a world swimming in chaos, we have you with light and peace and order, and we have you for an eternal life. And Father, words can't express that gratitude we have for you. Father, we would also like to uh, call on you for the, in the names of some of our members who are sick that we recently know about. Some were named this morning. Some have lost loved ones. Some are suffering uh, long-term illnesses, <clears throat> and some cannot be with us. And we know you understand their, their situation. We pray for them. We pray for them, those that are watching on virtual uh, and those that are unable to be with us in, in body, but yet worship with us in spirit. We're thankful for that, uh, and we're thankful for Thomas and Samuel who make that possible. Uh, and we, we pray that we are continually able to come up with ways to communicate and share with one another uh, that, which we, uh, that great gift which we all have in common. Father, we pray on behalf of Jean Brown, who is not here tonight because of illness. Uh, we ask that you be also with our young sister, Haley Foster. Uh, they are both home ill. And the others, Father, that have been previously named, we ask that you comfort them, comfort their families, comfort their losses and those that have lost loved ones. And we pray that you bless all of our lives with that peace that passes understanding and that comfort that exceeds just joy, but that comfort that transcends all the life's difficulties and snares that we all encounter. Go with us now through this time of worship. Be with Tom as he shares some more good news from your word and calls us to greater service here at Stroudsville. We're thankful, Father, for having concluded our VBS and what a wonderful success it was. And we're thankful for women like Shannon who can coordinate and organize and continuously uh, do these wondrous things in your name. We're thankful for all of our talented members here in Stroudsville. We are blessed with exceedingly wonderful and, and talented people. And we know that those all come from you. Thank you, Father, through the, the remainder of this meeting and the remainder of this week. We pray your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, every taste of song tonight, but number 603, 603. 
Uh, the song before this will be number 273. Let's stand and sing this, please. <clears throat> 273. Let's sing 1, 2, 4, and 5. 1, 2, 4, and 5. Each day or two a golden teen I help in those who are in need My life on earth is but a span And so I'll do the best I can My evening son is sinking low. A few more days, and I must go to meet the tears that I have done. Where there will be no setting sun to be a child of God each day. My light must shine along the way. I'll sing his praise while ages roll <clears throat> and strive to help some troubled soul. My feeding son is sinking low. A few more days, and I must go to meet the tears that I have done, where there will be no setting sun. I'll help someone in time of need and journey on. With rapid speed, I'll help the sick and poor and weak. And words of kindness to them speak. Life's evening sun, sinking low, a few more days. <clears throat> And I must go to meet the tears that I have done, where there will be no setting sun. While going down life's weary road, I'll try to live some travels home. I'll try to turn the night to day. May flowers bloom along the way. Life's evening sun is sinking low. A few more days. And I must go to meet the tears that I have done, <clears throat> where there will be no setting sun. Be seated, please. How's everybody doing tonight? I was just uh, noticing this morning when we pulled up in the church building parking lot, we saw the barn smoking, right? It's that time of year again. There's one thing you can count on in Stroudsville, and that's smoking barns. You know that fall is right around the corner, right? And so our gospel meeting is right around the corner, Friends and Family Day. We've got some of these printed up with Brother Walt Lieber. I love Brother Walt and his speaking ability. He's always so encouraging. He brings interesting lessons. And so I hope because we're having Brother Walt come, and you know he's a great speaker, he's biblical, he's encouraging, I hope that you'll bring somebody. You'll bring a friend or a neighbor, maybe a relative, but uh, come eat our big feed on the, on the Friends and Family Day on August 15, and then our meeting goes through the 17th. 
So please make an effort. We'd like to fill up the building and uh, kind of recover from this old nasty COVID stuff. Oh my goodness, look. It's a COVID, what do you call that thing? A cell, a germ, I don't know. Somebody that's more medical than I am. I know I've seen a zillion of those on TV and I'm like, I'm COVID fatigued. How about you? If I see one more needle go in an arm, I may get physically ill. I'm like, can I see anything on the news that is not COVID related? The answer is no, you have to endure COVID for a few more months, right? Now the Delta variant is back. And I'm like, please, please, anything but COVID. And so feeling this way, you're probably wondering, well, then why are you preaching about it, Brother Tom, right? If you're so tired of COVID. Well, I'm going to tell you why. That's a good question. What COVID can teach Christians? Did you know it can teach us something? It can, I, I promise. And I won't show you any needles, all right? No needles tonight. But let's go to the next slide. And I want to talk about COVID. There is an, a, uh, I think you call it a news feed. Anybody familiar with this? Where's Kevin? Kevin Trice? He's out doing security thing. Kevin, Kevin and I always talking about news and, and how the media, you know, tends to slant things. And it, Well, 1440 is supposed to be a news feed that is apolitical, right? No politics, no twisting, no slanting, just straight up news, right? And so in this 1440, I came across an article about COVID, and, and I'm not, please, I'm not scientific. My brother had all the brains in the family, you know, he was valedictorian at Lipscomb pre-med. He's a medical doctor. I, you know, I'm just a preacher. So he got all the brains. He understands all the medical stuff. But in this news article about COVID, um, let me share with you what I found fascinating, at least for my little lay brain, this, you know, my, my reading ability and all the big words that were used. Here are some things that I found fascinating about COVID and why it's been so successful in spreading from people to people. Some people, you know, sit six feet apart. Some people wear masks. Some people don't go out. Some people have become hermits for the last two years. But here's one reason that it, it is uh, so effective in this Delta, new Delta variant, is they said that um, the virus uses tricks to evade detection. All right, let that sink in for a minute. The virus uses tricks in your own immune system to evade detection. And what normally happens is, is there are certain cells in your body, right, and when something that comes in, the cells say, is this okay? They're like gatekeepers. They're checking your credentials, right? Can you come in? Are you good? Are you a threat? If the cells in your body, in your immune system, think that it is a threat, guess what they do? Bam! They attack it. No, you can't come in. You're not welcome because we think you're going to make the body sick. Guess what COVID did? It said, aha, I'm going to outsmart the body. Guess what it did? Anybody know? Raise your hand if you know. Don't answer out loud. What does COVID do? Anybody know? All right, next slide. In the next slide, it says that it tricks the body by using sugar. It comes wrapped in sugar. And it shows up at the, at the door of your body. These are lay terms. And it says, here I am. I'm a strange body coming in, uh, into your body. And, and, the, and the body says, well, who are you? And it says, I'm just a little sugar cell. No big deal. The body goes, taste it. It's sweet. Looks like sugar. Tastes like sugar. Harmless. And so the, the guards of the body step back, and COVID comes right on in. Isn't that neat? And that's how you get COVID. Isn't that sneaky? Like, how dare you, COVID? How dare you trick the body into thinking you're just a little harmless bit of sugar, and you come in and make a person so sick, they're on a ventilator for weeks and weeks, and some die. Now, I'm not making light of COVID. It's a very serious illness. Most people don't die from it, but several have, right? We call that a pandemic. So the body lets its guard down, and this little sugar-wrapped virus sneaks into the body, and then we know what COVID can do. So it's sneaky. And then... As I'm 
thinking and reading about this, I'm thinking, is there anything or anyone else in your life that's sneaky? Now, don't look at your wife or husband, please, right? Don't look at a relative. But I'm asking rhetorically, is there anything or anybody in your life that's sneaky? What do you think? Ah, Satan. That's exactly what I thought. Snake, Satan, I'll say it in a minute. Satan is sneaky just like COVID because he wraps himself, right, in these sugar molecules and pretends to be something that he's not, and your body goes, hey, it's okay, he's harmless, let him on in. And boom, once he's in, he creates havoc in your life. Can you relate to that? Anybody been down that road before? Have you ever heard yourself say, a much younger self, sounds like a good idea to me. I think I'm going to do that. And then later you realize that was a terrible idea. Who made me think of that? It was the devil. And the devil planted that seed in my brain. The devil made me think that was okay. The devil helped me justify doing, does this sound familiar? Am I the only one that does this? Y'all don't have that problem? We all make bad mistakes sometimes, don't we? In failures in judgment, we all do things and get tricked by the devil because he's sneaky. What we see and taste is sweet, but in reality, it can do serious harm if we let him in. Y'all get the image, what I'm trying to say tonight? It's a very simple message, right? Because I'm not the brains of the operation here. My brother is. But it's a very simple concept. Satan is successful in people's lives because he wraps himself in sugary things that look good and are attractive and trick us. Once ingested into the body, Satan does his damage and inflicts great harm and sometimes causes death in people's lives. Drug addiction, alcohol, addiction to other things like pornography that causes divorce and infidelity. People who get addicted to gambling, all kinds of things, alcohol. These are all things that our body craves, and Satan figures out a way to sneak himself in and get us involved in the things that are harmful. And that's just the way he operates. Scientists have discovered that this COVID virus has adaptations. Now, you'll notice that there's one, two, three, four, four or five things that are highlighted in yellow. And if you're making notes tonight, I want you to write those five things down. Adaptation, number one. Adaptation, two, um, they grab, they grab. COVID actually, when they've done microscopic studies of that little virus and how it attaches itself, once it passes through the immune system with its sugar coating and the body says, yeah, you're okay, come on in. Once it gets in, it goes, Boom! And it puts a barb in your body. Literally. The COVID virus puts a barb in your body and anchors itself so tight that the body can't get rid of it. And so it grabs on with a barb. It has surprising strength once it gets in. All right? It's like a worm or a virus. And then it hides itself once it's inside. It's hard to detect. So that little, that little uh, innocent-looking sugar cell that comes into your body and the, and the gatekeepers of your body say, it's okay, granted entrance, let it in, boom! It uses adaptation, it grabs with a barb, it has surprising strength, and it hides itself. It's very difficult to find because it has this illusion, right, of being something it's not. And as I started reading this article, I'm like, Boy, that sounds like the devil. That is amazing how COVID and the devil are tracking parallel here in the lives of so many people. So I want to talk about adaptation. What does adapting mean? Adapt adaptation lets COVID survive in different environments. Uh, it, it, it does really well by changing, morphing, shifting. Uh, it learns to blend into its environment. It, it does whatever is necessary to accomplish its goal. And Satan is the same way. He's a master at, at adaptation. He learns to adapt in our world. Um, once Satan 
was cast down, and I don't know exactly when that happened in the world timeline. We have different theories about when it might have happened. Was it pre-creation, post-creation? Uh, did, did Satan literally become um, a, a prince over an earthly do domain? It, it would appear that in some Old Testament passages, there are certain kings that could be referred to Satan himself, or they have Satan-like attributes. We don't know, but we do know that Satan is called the prince of the power of, of basically this, this world. He's the prince of this world. He has extremely powerful influence. And so he's become a master at learning at watching and adapting. I think Satan personally sends demonic forces, and I don't mean to scare anybody, but I think he sends demonic forces out to watch you. Have you ever thought about that? You may have a satanic force, a demon, who is watching you and going back and reporting what you do, how you do it. Are there any areas of weakness we need to be aware of? All right, make a note on that. All right, weakness, weakness. Yeah, yeah, they get depressed. They get discouraged. Somebody at church said something hateful to them. They hate Christians now. They're not sure they want to go to church. Any Ooh, I think I see a way to get to this. I think I see a way to get them away from, from God. All right, here is your job, Mr. Demon. We want you to go tent them this way, hurt them this way. And so they have that adaptive ability in your personal life. Now, I'm not making this up because the Bible talks about forces that are unseen, correct? Unseen forces in the world. Forces that don't necessarily exist on this earth as we know them, but they're out there. And there's a good force and there's an evil force. And Satan already hates God. He, he's angry at God. He's angry at God's creation, and he wants to take us out. He is not our friend. As a matter of fact, like COVID, if he gets in us and affects us, he might even kill us. He wants to destroy our soul. And I'm not saying that lightly. Satan is working hard on every Christian out there. And if you don't believe me, talk to some of our elders and ask them if we have members of this congregation that might be struggling with spiritual issues and maybe uh, in the process of not coming to church anymore. It, it happens. Shepherds are having to go out and rescue sheep who have allowed Satan to come in and influence them. It is an ongoing battle that we fight. Why is Satan so successful? Because his ability to adapt and watch and study our lives. And in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, 10, Paul says to the church at Ephesus, you're familiar with this passage, this is nothing new. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Now I want to, I want to talk about armor just a minute. I've never served in the military but armament, if you've talked to anybody that's been in any of the armed forces, I know we have veterans here, when you go out and you train in battle, you wear a helmet. You wear certain types of protection that protect your body. And, and, and when bullets start flying or shrapnel starts flying, you want to be armored up well and, and, and ready for battle. Because if there's a single area where your body's not covered and you're hit by a bullet or shrapnel, you could die right? I mean, this is serious stuff. When you're at war and you're in the middle of a battle and bullets are flying by and shrapnel is flying by and there's percussions and, and, and things that can kill you, you want to be protected by armor. We are at war, church. Satan is assaulting brethren in the church. He's assaulting Stroudsville and we have to be strong. We have to armor up. Now notice in verse 11, Paul says, that we have to stand against, what's that word? Schemes. What is a scheme? A scheme is a plot. It is a deceptive way to make you believe something that is not true. Ponzi scheme. You ever heard that before? What is a Ponzi scheme? It, it's a way of deceiving people to invest, right, and reinvest. Uh, just the other day, maybe you saw this on the news, a, a guy was so good at convincing people. He was a showman. And he had this beautiful 18-wheeler um, cab. The truck, have you seen the truck part? All electric. He had it on display. 
And it was beautiful, you know, had all the lights, and he had a picture of it going down the road. Now, what we found out later, there was no engine or transmission in this big truck, right, this electric truck. They put it up on a hill and let it roll, and they had a professional camera crew. I'm not lying, a professional camera crew filming this truck, all glistened and painted, and tires were slick, rolling down the road. And he said to these investors, you are looking at the future. Electric vehicles, 18-wheelers going up and down the interstate, battery-operated. You've got to get in on this investment opportunity. I'm not, I'm not making this up. Anybody see this story? I'm the only one who watches TV, I guess. So. It was a scheme. And he duped them out of millions of dollars. Now he's going to end up in prison, right? But he was very, very persuasive. I saw that truck and I'm like, oh, that is so beautiful. Now I think Tesla, by the way, has invented a real electric 18-wheeler truck, right? The cab part. They really have. But he sold it and convinced people. He had a scheme. The devil has schemes. And in your private lives, the devil is constantly approaching you and wanting you to buy the product. That's how he works. What is your product that Satan wants you to buy? See, yours is different than mine, but he wants us to buy something. In the wilderness, think about this. After Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was weak, he was hungry, Tired, um, what was the very first thing the devil used? Hunger. Oh, he's not stupid, y'all. He's smart. And he knows what you want. He used hunger. Then he offered our Lord wealth. He said, if you'll bow down and worship me, I'm going to give you all these earthly kingdoms. Our Savior had no earthly possessions. Jesus, the creator, here's ironic, Jesus is the creator of the universe. He lived in heaven with angelic hosts and the Father and was praised and worshipped. Now he's on earth serving us in this humble little earthly body that gets hungry and tired. And what does Satan do in his moment of weakness? He says, hey, you remember all that power you enjoyed and that praise and adoration, the glory that you experienced in heaven? I can give you that right. Bow down and worship me. Jesus, look at all of the earthly things I have. Satan's powerful, y'all. He's strong. He's wealthy. He's sneaky. And finally, the last temptation is he wanted Jesus to jump off the pinnacle of the temple because he quoted him scripture from the Old Testament. See, Satan knows the Bible. He's going to use scriptures to deceive you, just like he tried to deceive Jesus. And I love what Jesus said each time, and you know what he said, it is written. Let's say that together. It is written. If we could just remember that anytime we're tempted, anytime we suspect Satan is trying to deceive us, let's go to the Word of God. Study the Word. And remember that it is written. Somewhere in the Bible, there's an answer for Satan's Ponzi scheme, for his schemes in our life. The next thing is he grabs. Uh, just like COVID has a barb that literally latches onto your body and it's tenaciously holding on, Satan tenaciously wants to hold on to you. I always think of Satan like a bass fisherman. And I know we have people that fish quite a bit in the corrugation. But man, you, you throw that lure out, you know, these specially designed lures that have very realistic movement. And, and if you throw that lure out enough, there's going to be a bass that comes along. He says, either one, you're annoying me and I'm going to eat you, or I'm hungry, I'm going to eat you. But that lure will be effective. Pow! That, that uh, bass will strike the lure. But fishermen, a good fisherman is patient, right? If you made three or four casts and said, well, it's a bad day, I'm out of here, you wouldn't be a successful fisherman, would you? Usually fishermen would go to spot, to spot, to spot, to spot. And maybe after four or five spots, they'll get that bass. 
but they're patient. They keep throwing that lure, just like Satan does. He knows your buttons. He knows your weakness. And if that particular lure doesn't work like a good fisherman, what does he do? He changes colors. He changes appearance. He changes depth. He changes, he changes, he's always changing, but he's patient. He wants to get you. And once you, once you bite, he sets the hook. Wham, hard. I've been taught by bass fishermen, if you, get a, if you get a strike from a bass, don't go like this. What are you supposed to do? You know Wes, John. Mm. You said it hard, right? Even if you miss the bass, if it's a bass, you're going to get him if you set the hook. He pulls hard. He pulls hard. He wants to set the hook. He wants you. Another thing to think about is the world already belongs to Satan. They're in his camp, right? Who does he really, really want? He wants Christians. He wants God's people. He wants people that have in them, leading them, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is comforting them, and they cry out, Abba, Father, people that belong to God. And, and Satan wants, that's his prize bass, if you will. That's the trophy for, for Satan, is God's people, right? That's the prize. You are Satan's prize catch. You ever thought about that? So be careful. He grabbed you. Proverbs 5, the lips of a forbidden woman drip honey. And the only reason I, I share this, it has nothing to do with men being, um, maybe having infidelity in their marriage. Uh, that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm not preaching against men. Um, but there are women out there who, who set traps, right? And Satan uses them. And my point is this, that sin is often so enticing by the things that appeal to us. That's just the way Satan works. The lips of a forbidden woman drip honey. Oh, right? Oh, that, that's so attractive to me and so sweet forbidden fruit. Her speech is smoother than oil. In the end, she's bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps follow the path to Sheol. She does not ponder the path of life. Her ways wander, and she does not know it. Satan uses things to trap and entice you. It may not be a woman. It may not be whatever. You fill in the blank, whatever your weakness is, but I promise you Satan is watching, and he's trying to grab you. At the end of your life, you groan when your flesh and body are consumed. Now, surprising strength. We're going on to our next attribute of COVID, comparing it to Satan. Surprisingly, um, once COVID gets in, uh, I, I, had, I read from a, a friend the other day on Facebook, his wife, who happens to be my cousin, was on a ventilator, and the doctor came to him privately. He's a minister of the gospel. And the doctor came to him privately and said, look, your wife has been on a ventilator for X days. Statistically, her chances of getting off the ventilator and living right now are zero. That's pretty sobering. <laughs> she was overweight, right? One of the no-nos for a ventilator patient on COVID. They put her uh, stomach down and she was hanging on by a thread, near death. The doctor said, you're not going to make it. COVID has killed a lot of people. It has surprising strength. Just like Satan has surprising strength. Now, the good news is, uh, there was a lot of prayers that were lifted up for my first cousin, and she's alive today. She beat the odds. If, if you know somebody in the church who has been lured away by the devil, and you do, I do, we all do. If you know somebody that you think is a lost cause, pray for them, call them, write them, and say, I love you, and God loves you. He hadn't given up on you yet. Would you do that? Because you might just save their soul against the odds. Stay alert, 1 Peter 5, 8. Watch 
out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. There's nothing very subtle about a roaring lion. I've been told uh, that you can physically hear in the wilderness a lion roar for over five miles. Nothing subtle about that. Satan wants you. When a lion crushes his prey, bones break. He's that powerful. We are not messing around with a weak adversary. He is strong, he is powerful, and he wants you. Okay? For those Christians who think it's okay to dabble in sin, I'm just warning you. He's a worthy adversary. Uh, This is from Isaiah 14. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the most high. Isaiah 14. Satan took on God. He convinced other angels in a heavenly coup, if you will. He's powerful. He's cunning. He's beautiful. But he lost. And because he lost, he's mad. And now he has surprising strength. I'm sorry God created him so strong. I'm sorry that Satan has that kind of ferocity. But he does. And that's the world we live in right now, church. Maybe you know somebody that's fighting the devil. He's a force to be reckoned with. Listen to Daniel 10, 12. This is an angel speaking to Daniel. Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I've come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. All right, first of all, I got a question. Who fights angels? Is it kings? Nope. Who fights angels? Satanic forces. He withstood him 21 days. This was an angelic and satanic battle for 21 days. Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia. That's a different study. You might want to check it out and see what kind of battle was going on, but it was a ferocious battle. Finally, COVID is effective because it's so good at hiding itself. This doesn't surprise us. The Bible tells us that Satan can change himself, all right, from being a ferocious roaring lion, right? No subtlety there, five-mile roar. You know he's coming to the serpent who now slithers in the grass. Sorry, Meg. That just, Meg hates snakes, right? She, She won't let me say the word, but I can say it up here and get away with it. She hates them. Uh, They're subtle, and they slither, right? They go through the grass undetected. Y'all ever seen any noise? Other than the rattlesnake, you know, snakes are pretty quiet. But what's interesting about a serpent is that he's very uh, subtle and goes undetected. The other thing about Satan I find amazing is that he can transform himself. He's like a shapeshifter where he now becomes uh, one of the most prominent members in your congregation. You're like, say what? That's what I said. Satan can become a very prominent member of your congregation, well-respected, who counsels people, who's very knowledgeable in the Bible. You're like, no, that's him. No, no, no. Satan, Satan doesn't live in church. Yes, he does. Some of you people who have been at various congregations have encountered Satan in congregations where you've attended, and you know what I'm talking about. He is in corrugations because he can take on a form where he is an angel of light. Now listen to that, an angel of light. You look at someone and you go, oh, they're so righteous and holy and knowledgeable and they give wise counsel. Who would not want to go to this brother or sister? And all of a sudden, we learn after the fact that they were an angel of light, someone who appeared to be good, but inside were actually evil. And they took out others with them and did irreparable harm to the church. You think I'm making this up? This is true. This happens in the church. And so we need to be wise. We need to be discerning. We need to be careful who we trust. And I, again, take off my hat to our elders. You guys 
have a hard job to protect the flock. And you've got to be careful. You are the gatekeepers of this congregation. And Bobby and, 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 and Howard, there are people that show up at our doors that are all covered in candy, sugar coating. And they look really good. And you're like, should we let them in? Should we let them in? They don't look harmful. But guess what? <laughs> Once you let them in, you begin to realize something's not adding up. Something doesn't appear right. So we have to be careful. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. you might want to read that, study it and pray about it. Satan can be very beautiful, very seductive, very appealing. His initial appearance is not some hideous creature, right? This red outfit with a pitchfork and a... No, 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 no. Satan can take any form he wants because he's seductive and he'll trick you. And he can even appear to be someone good. He can appear to be someone holy. He could appear to be a role model, somebody that you look up to. And if you're not careful, you can be deceived. So five things we talked about tonight. His adaptive skills, just like COVID. He will get close to you and sink his barb into you. He's very powerful. And finally, he hides in plain sight because he's a shapeshifter and he can morph. He can appear to be things. He can have actually appear to be good and holy. Why do I say these things? I say these things for two reasons. One, I want you to keep studying your Bible. I want you to be wise and discerning and, and be careful. Always pray about decisions that you make. And if you're struggling with temptation, don't keep that struggle a secret. Confess it. Talk to somebody that you love and, or meet with an elder. Talk with somebody that's a spiritual advisor. Don't keep that sin a secret and struggle alone. Satan is too powerful to mess with by yourself. You need help. That's why we confess our sins one to another. That's why we offer an invitation when we conclude a lesson. The second thing is pray for your shepherds in the congregation who are the ones who protect the flock, who go after sheep who've been lured away, see, who've been lured away from the safety of the flock. The shepherds go out and find that one who's gone away before the wolves eat it alive, before Satan destroys the soul. So it's a sobering lesson. It's a scary lesson when I think about the power of Satan. But yet I think about what the Bible says, greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. God is more powerful than Satan, and he's the one who will deliver us. Jesus loves you. He died for you, and we invite you to come to him. Whatever your struggle may be tonight, let's stand and sing. Wes?
those unable to take the Lord's Supper today, it will be available back in room one. Our closing song tonight will be number 479. Let's sing one and three, please. <clears throat> one and three. I'm satisfied with just cause below. How little silver, how little gold. But in that city where the ranch will shine, I want to go on that silver line. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. In that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we'll never more wander. But walk the streets that are pure as gold. Don't think me poor, desert or lonely. I'm not discouraged, I'm heaven bound. I'm just a pilgrim in search of a city. I want a mansion, a robe and crown. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we'll never more wander. But walk the streets that are pure as gold. Bow me, please. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we're thankful for another beautiful Lord's Day you bless us with, and thank you for the opportunities we've had to come together and sing praises to you, and come to you in prayer, and read from your holy word, and thankful for the lessons that we've heard. Uh, both this morning and tonight. Please help us to uh, read and study your word daily. Realize uh, how dangerous and tricky that the devil can be, uh, not only to those who do not know you currently, but each of us that are Christians. Help us to always uh, stand guard and us to always focus upon the truth and what your will is for us. Help us to remain faithful each and every day of our lives that we might be the shining light in this dark and cruel world which we live. Help us to be willing and able to share your good news with others to invite people uh, for Bible studies and invite them to church services and uh, encourage them in any way we can. I'm just so thankful for successful BBS that we had last week and thankful for all those who volunteered their time and efforts. Uh, these seeds of truth might be planted and pray that you will be with each of our young people that attended and help them to continue to learn more about you, become a Christian, and uh, follow you all the days of their life. Pray, Father, for our upcoming uh, gospel meeting, especially Brother Walt Lever as he prepares the messages. Pray that you will bless him as he uh, studies and prepares these messages. Please be with each one of us that will continue to pray and uh, invite those who, who uh, do not know you, friends and neighbors, loved ones, just pray that you will bless this gospel meeting. Father, we ask you please be with all those who are sick uh, in any way. Um, there's been some mentioned tonight that uh, not feeling well, and Haley Foster and Brother Gene, you know that there are several others that not feeling well. I just pray that you'll please uh, bless each and every one of them with uh, good health soon. I just pray that you'll 
be with all the doctors and nurses attending to their needs. And they can be back to their own place of life soon. Pray, Father, for those who are bowed down in sorrow of the loss of loved ones. Especially we pray for uh, Reese Christensen and his family and the loss of his grandmother. Just pray that you'll please uh, comfort and strengthen them as only you can do. Father, we ask you to go with us now as we separate. And just help us to do those things that are pleasing except in your eyes. Bring us back to the next point in time. These things we ask in Christ's name.